Welcome to Tales from the Jar Side. My name is Ken Cousin. In this particular video, I want to talk to you about why you use the testing tool Mikito. What sort of problem does it solve? How does it help you? In fact, this is the reason I wrote the book here, Mikito Made Clear, was because I kept encountering people who didn't really understand why you'd ever want a tool like this and weren't there easier ways to accomplish the same things Mikito does for you. So let's get right into it. Now, I wrote a series of blog posts on Medium that explain a lot of these issues. And here's one of them, which is entitled, Why Use Mikito at All? You'll notice it's published in the Pragmatic Programmer's publication. They're the publisher of the book. I'm supporting their publication. They're running these blog posts. But some people aren't really interested in reading all these blog posts, and they may also not be interested in reading them on Medium, and I get that. So let's talk about what problems Mikito solves and how you might take advantage of it, and then later we could talk about when not to use it, for example. So in order to do this, I want to have a Hello World program that would be appropriate for a tool like Mikito. Now, Mikito is a testing framework written in Java that automatically generates mocks, stubs, and spies for your dependencies. Rather than take time to define all that, I just basically want to go directly to the code. So the code is in the post, and I'll put a link to the post in the description, but let's take a look at it in the GitHub repository. So I'll put a link to the GitHub repository in the description as well. So here's my Hello World class, which I'm going to call Hello Mikito. The purpose of this class is to have a greet method that takes an ID and looks up a person based on that ID and then finds out their source language and target language and translates your hello name message from the source language to the target language. Now, this is the method I'm going to want to test. This method relies on two dependencies, a person repository, which is an interface that will look up the person by ID for you, and a translation service that translates the message from the source language to the target language, and here's the logic written in there. How do I test this? Now, keep in mind, in order to test this, I'm going to need to instantiate this class, which means I need a person repository and a translation service. I have conveniently put in a constructor for that purpose to make it a little bit easier. Now, let me go directly to the test. Here is a JUnit 5 test based on Mikito. I'm using the extend with annotation from JUnit 5 with the Mikito extension provided by the Mikito team. What that extension does for you is it supports these annotations here, mock and inject mocks. What Makito will do on my behalf when I run this test is it will instantiate both mocks. It'll instantiate the person repository and the translation service, and it will plug them into an instantiated Hello Makito class automatically on my behalf. What I only need to do is to, quote, set the expectations, tell Makito what I want those methods to do. Here in my test, I'm going to greet a person that I know exists. So here is the when method from Makito. And in each case, I'm going to say, OK, on that repository, when I call find by ID with any integer, that's called an argument matcher. We'll look at them in more detail in a later video. Then I want it to return Admiral Hopper, Grace Hopper here, wrapped in an optional. Also, when I call translate on the translation service with this string and English to English for my languages, then just bring back the string over again. So Makito will automatically generate my stubs for those two classes, the dependencies there, and set them up to do this. Here's my actual test. I call the greet method with an ID and the languages, and then I check that the greeting I get back is the greeting I'm expecting. The other thing I can do, however, is I can then wrap those two mocks in an in-order object from Makito. And what that'll allow me to do is to verify that my greet method called find by ID on the repository with any int one time, and then called the translate method on the translation service with a string and these two hard-coded strings exactly once again in that order. So you see the benefit here is Makito generated all that code for me.
Now, you could have written your own fake classes. I get that. But let's look at another test before we examine that in more detail. Here's a test that deals with the case where you look up the person by ID and there isn't one. So this is do testing the greet method for a person that doesn't exist. So this time, when you call find by ID without any, any int, then I want to return an empty optional. Now notice I changed the behavior of the find by ID method in this test only so that I don't have to create a whole second class or put in some flag to say, oh, under this circumstance, answer this way, and that circumstance, answer that way. I can tell it on a test by test basis how to reply. Now, the translate's the same. And when I call greet this time, the answer should be hello world from Makito. That's how I wrote the code in the greet method. I can still do all the in-order tests, and they're the same as well. And both of these tests pass. Everything works just fine. So now let's go back to the post and summarize some of these issues. So I'll scroll down past the code with all the classes in it, and let's look at the downsides of writing those fake fake objects for the dependencies yourself. Well, first of all, if the dependency had many methods in an interface, like person repository probably has a dozen or more methods, not just find by ID, you have to implement them all, even if you're only interested in one of them. And you've got to make sure they don't interact in unexpected ways. You, you, you've got to do the work. Likewise, if you, main, if you write it, you have to maintain it. You got to check it into source code control, make sure that that thing's okay and updated in changing circumstances. If the dependency isn't an interface, like that translation service could be an actual class, well, how are you going to write your own fake? You could extend it and override the method, but what if the class is final? and you can't extend it, or the methods you need to modify or to replace are also final. How are you going to handle that? That's another thing Makito can do for you without much trouble. What if the methods in the dependencies are static? You can't override static methods, that's just basic Java. What about failure cases? As you saw, I wanted the behavior to be different in a different test, and I didn't have to rewrite my my mocks or anything like that. I just had to change the set expectations. And even with all that, if you do it yourself, there's no built-in way to have Java verify that the methods in the dependencies were called by your test method the right number of times with the right arguments in the right order. So what did Makito do for us? What Makito did is it created the actual mock and stub implementations for us. It allowed us to set the expectations on a test by test basis. It automatically injected the stubs into the class I'm testing. Then I ran my test and it allowed us to verify that the methods were called by the greet method the right number of times in the right order with the right arguments in my dependencies. So Makito automates the process of generating these fakes. It makes it easy once you learn the API to get the objects, the dependencies to do what you want them to do. And it allows you to verify optionally, if you're interested in that, that the methods, the protocol, the interaction between my class under test and the dependencies invoke the methods the right number of times with the right arguments in the right order. That's the benefit to a tool like Makito. In future videos, we'll look at many of those steps in more detail, but hopefully that gives you an idea how Makito can help you when you're writing your tests. So thank you very much for your attention and good luck using it in the future. Take care.